conservative. Christian. Mother. Wife. Air Force veteran. Gun rights advocate. This is Stacy on the Right. Here's your host, Stacy Washington. Well, hello there. Welcome back to Stacy on the Right here on Sirius XM's Patriot Channel. Hour three, coming at you live and direct. Glad to have you here tonight. Thank you for your time. All right. Let's welcome in to the program. We have joining us right now, Carl Sabo, Vice President and General Counsel of Net Choice. He's a professor of internet law at George Mason University Scalia Law School. Carl, thanks for coming back on. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right. So uh, artificial intelligence, people are raving about um, chatbot AI, their their GPT chatbot, they're, they're all the different ones that are kind of coming to the forefront and they're writing the blog posts and people are feeling kind of good about it. But you're warning us about the popularity as it grows. Yeah. So when it comes to AI, it is one of the most amazing technologies. But what we know is that whenever there's new technology, new opportunity, people will push the boundaries. And one of the dangers that we need to be prepared for is that you see government stepping in and trying to seize control and trying to dictate how the technology should evolve. So what I don't want to see is that as we expand and evolve the power of AI, that we don't put ourselves in a position where Congress or the Biden administration has an excuse to come in and seize control. Now, when I talk about AI, it's a lot of stuff. And it's kind of this uh, anything goes term where you can say whatever you want about AI without really understanding what that actually means. So AI is being used today. It's being used today to save lives. I'll give you a quick example. Uh, My mother had breast cancer, and they did a mammogram. The doctors look at it. They actually didn't find anything. Well, AI is actually being used today to detect breast cancer better than a human doctor can, and that's simply because it can look at millions of mammograms and identify breast cancer. Same things being true for identifying at-risk birth and babies in breach before the doctors can, can identify it. It's being used to help parents with homeschooling and create specific programs that are attuned for the needs of that child. And likewise, it's being, helped, uh, being used to help the elderly get around town through things like driverless cars. AI has such incredible potential. But like all great things, what we will see is kind of this overarching panic set in. We're already starting to see it. Chuck Schumer, uh, Senate president, just announced that he wants to begin legislating on AI. President Biden just announced that he wants to start creating rules on AI. And the real danger lies in our government shutting down this innovation and forcing the free market to innovate at the speed of government. And that's just something we can't allow. So whenever we talk about the government getting involved in some new technology, everyone should just sit up and be completely perplexed because the government seems to really mess these things up. They get in the way. They, they make things difficult. Yeah, exactly. And when it comes to AI, it's not a question of if, but where? And, you know, you've spoken a lot on your show about kind of the, the clowns in D.C. and the real predicament that they put us all in. You saw the second largest bank failure in U.S. history just this past week. And these are the same individuals who have already given away our energy independence to our foreign adversaries. What we cannot allow them to do is give away our technological independence. And they would do this by instituting something like a, let's say we take a six-month pause on development. Well, guess what? The rest of the world's not taking a pause. The bad actors aren't taking a pause. And what they will do is they will weaponize AI against American citizens. AI will be used and is being used for cybersecurity efforts to breach our types of systems. And there's a report just out today on how Microsoft was uh, seeing their systems
systems attacked by AI developed by Iran. Frankly, the best way to stop such attack is to employ our own AI to combat the bad actors and their cybersecurity experts. We can also use AI to combat the nonstop spam emails that we're getting, the nonstop junk phone calls that we're getting, and that is one of those amazing tools. Now, when it comes to AI across the board, we're kind of suggesting some best practices, and these best practices should come from industry because industry can adapt, industry can evolve, industry can adjust, and it can do it on the fly, and it can do it without having to go through the slow grinding process of government, and it can do so without handing more power over to government. And some simple guidelines that we've come up with are transparency, accountability, and security for AI. Transparency, when you're engaging with an AI system, tell people that they're engaging with an AI. Accountability, every rule that applies today, whether online or offline, should apply to AI. And security, when we're using these systems, we need to make sure that they're secure, that if we're submitting confidential information, if it's business records, stuff like that, it will not be used in a way that can be accessed by other people and abused in ways that other people can abuse it. So that's some pretty simple ideas of accountability, transparency, and security. And it doesn't require a single new rule. It doesn't require a single new regulation. And it doesn't require a single dollar to expand the federal government. And that's how we evolve. That's how we use AI. That's how we use AI intelligently. I love that you're saying the answer to them using AI to attack our systems is to have our own AI that defends. That that takes it out of the realm of leaving it with a human being and puts it into the same realm that they're attacking us in. It's, it's, it's meeting them on the field of battle and an equal footing and possibly a greater one because we have wonderful minds here that could program AI to do so much. That's exactly right. I mean, why would... Why would you go into battle with one hand tied behind your back or without the best tools for the job? When it comes to these cyber attacks, it's not something a human can combat. We're talking about thousands of intrusion efforts a minute. And just a human being cannot compete on that scale. And, you know, in, inevitably somebody will come up and say the word the Terminator. Well, simple solution. We outlaw Terminators. Say you can't use AI to make a Terminator. Okay, cool. We, but we don't outlaw the technology. And that's unfortunately what we're starting to see from a lot of people in government. Just uh, today there was a bill introduced by a House Democrat regarding the use of AI in election ads. And she introduced this because Republicans just the other day used AI to help generate what would a world look like with four more years of Biden as president. <laughs> really? I ha yeah, and, and so you see Democrats now trying to hand over control, hand over regulation of the use of AI to the election commission, which is headed by Democrats. And so what we're really starting to see is AI, at least as it's being discussed on Capitol Hill, there are some serious discussions, but it seems like a lot of the discussions are not so much about AI, not so much about technology, but about control, control of election ads. We have the Federal Trade Commission, which is this government bureaucracy that oversees all businesses. They want to make sure that AI comports with uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, they want to make AI more woke, so they're seeking to do rules on AI. And now we have the White House seeking to do rules on AI. At the end of the day, you don't need a single new rule. If something is fraudulent, it is fraudulent, whether it's done by a human or it's done by AI. Whether something is criminal, it is criminal, regardless of whether it's done by a human or a human using an AI system. So we don't need a single new rule, but a lot of these calls for new rules are not about creating new rules. 
They're about creating more power, more centralized control in government over this new technology to dictate how it evolves, if it evolves, and that's just not going to be good for anyone. And also to, to make it possible that um, every single American will feel um, that AI is something to fear and want the government to be in charge of it as opposed to, you know, what what – what it really is, which is just another form of technology that can be harnessed to do, it can do some pretty amazing things. Exactly. The, the medical innovations alone are, are just incredible to think about. And if you ask anyone who's lost a loved one to cancer, to heart disease, to any of these medical challenges that we face, if they would give what they would give to have another day, another week, another month, another year with that loved one, they would say anything. And that's some of the tools, that's some of the power that AI can give us if we allow it to do run its course. The nice thing about the free market at the same time is whenever a business goes too far, you have law enforcement that can take action, but also you have consumers who will vote with their feed. So I was talking to somebody earlier today about this, and they asked me, how do we address the potential of AI being too woke? Well, I think you need only look at the experience that Bud Light endured mm. when they went too woke and the fallout they had with their customer base. The same thing is true with any business that is offering AI tools to business level services or to consumers. If they are woke, if they don't perform as described, if they go too far, if they are not working properly, people will vote with their feet. And just in the same way people voted with their feet with Bud Light, they will vote with their feet if they encounter a woke AI. And that's the power of the free market. And that is the power of something that can operate without government intrusion. Yep, we still and do that's have the those things. For all of us. And I love it. I love the free market. Um, I think it's the most powerful thing we still have because at the end of the day, you can control institutions and you can even brainwash people, but the market still bends to the will of those who will or will not spend. And um, I saw a story about Anheuser-Busch having to get rid of barrels of beer you know that they're the yeah. normally they don't have to store it right that it doesn't it doesn't get stored at all because it goes right into the bottles and it's sold as fast as they can crank it off of the conveyor belt and it runs 24 hours a day it's one of the most amazing factories in the entire country um, I always recommend to people you know sometimes they'll say oh it's flyover country you know St. Louis well we do have that Anheuser-Busch bottling factory the original one that Anheuser-Busch the actual Mr. Anheuser Mm -hmm. um, he created it, and it is a, an engineering marvel. It's beautiful, and it's something, once you've seen it, you'll never again think to yourself, you know, what can one person do? And there are a lot of places like that in our country where you, you can see something that someone built, and it just inspires you so much. But I'm not a beer drinker, and I've never really loved beer, and I still don't, but I've never seen anything that kind of shifted in my mind what one person who loves a product and wants everyone else to love it, what they can do if they just work hard and they have the support of their family, the Anheuser-Busch Bottling Factory is one of those places. And to see something like that, a venerable um, economic giant brought low to its knees over a marketing decision that was clearly idiotic and, and nonsensical, morons and nincompoops were in charge of that. But to see them brought low by their own customers, um, the free market's still alive and well, and it is a horrible, dastardly, beautiful teacher. Um, and so AI would fall under that as well, I, I would hope. Exactly. America is and continues to be the greatest nation on the planet. You mentioned Anheuser-Busch. You could say the same thing about Hershey's chocolate. Yes. You could say the same thing about McDonald's, Ford. I mean, America is a world leader, and it's because we innovate, because we are free to innovate and we are free to develop. And that's what we need to do with AI. Because as I mentioned earlier, it's not a question of if, but a question of when and where. And we want it to happen here in the U.S., not overseas, not 
from foreign nations. China is already developing, and if we let them become the world leader for AI, they will dominate the next decade of this technology, and we may never catch up. So yeah. the last thing we can do is to handicap ourselves and give ourselves a bad starting position in this race. Yeah, I, I love the fact that you're ahead of, on this and you're out there speaking out early. Um, thank you so much for countering the warnings of looming catastrophes and naysayers and, you know, the chicken little uh, people. We need to develop our technology and stay on the cutting edge. Um, hiding our heads in the sand will only separate us and, and help us to fall behind. Always a pleasure to have you here. Call Carl Sabo, a Vice President and General Counsel of NetChoice. Um, your website for NetChoice is netchoice.org, netchoice.org. Thank you so much, Carl, for coming on. Thanks for having me. All right. Have a great night. 866-957-2874 if you'd like to join the program. We'll be right back with more.